Okay. So you were home last night? Yep. Okay. And what did you hear, see? Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So it's, I told the other mm -hmm. officer I talked to this morning that I saw, I heard a car move or a car door open and close around 3 when we left. But I didn't see who was. 3 a.m. or p.m.? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Yeah, yeah, okay. When we were leaving to go run errands. But I didn't see who it was or mm -hmm. I think it was the Mercedes. Um, but I didn't see who it was or anything. And then it was between like around 6.30 p.m. last night. Um, we were sitting in our living room watching TV and I heard a few loud thuds. Um, it sounded like something heavy um, hitting the wall. Um, it was a few together and then a pause and then a couple more. And that was it. How long do you think it was between the pause? Enough. I got up and looked out the window didn't see anything. It was starting to get dark out, so I didn't see anything. And then a couple more, so what, like 30 seconds to a minute? Okay. Okay. And in your your living room is right here, so it's set uh, up basically? On the, on the back side. Okay. Can I but just look real quick? Okay, yep, so. Yeah, we were sitting in here and it sounded like it was either outside or in the corner of their house because I looked out in the back. Okay. And I know the other officer asked you this before, but have you heard gunshots before? Um, not, uh, not a lot, so. Okay. A couple times out of three years. Okay, all so. right. Did you ever have any interaction with them, pal? Not a lot. Okay. Um, we, they came to one of the association meetings this summer and they sat with us outside and there's food and stuff and uh, whenever we got the pavement redone she had come home with groceries and the whole big ordeal because she had to park on the street and then couldn't get in or thought she couldn't get in because the pavement was redone and she asked me a question. Um, I think I probably read to them once or twice. Okay. Do you ever hear any fights, arguments, anything like that? No. Okay. I, yeah, we barely hear any noise what? on the other side. I can hear like cabinets from the other side, but I don't really okay. hear anything from over there. Okay. The cat is sitting up and they're still here. The cat's still here once in a while. Okay. All right. If you think of anything, that's my sure. card. All right. All right. We are now here, and Sophia has joined us. We're going to be discussing a murder that happened about 22 months after David Crowley's death. This also happened in Apple Valley. Hey, Sophia. Hey, good evening. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you. It happened on uh, November 3rd, 2016. The police uh, released a statement on November 5th where they classified this as a murder-suicide. Yes, two days. That's a little better than um, a couple hours or within 24 hours, but okay, two two days. And this is a uh, rule that a husband who was 49 <coughs> shot his wife who was 56. Hmm. Now they don't know exactly when this happened, but I, you're, I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna get there too. So, um, all right. So let's keep moving on with this. Um, what else do we know ab about this case? Well, this case is kind of interesting because when I had sent off the paperwork, I didn't receive all the information that we received in the Crowley case. So the only thing that I have is just the, replace, the police report and photos. All I have to go from is just what's written down. And, how, many pages, um, how many pages was, the, was this police report? or the police reports that you got? 27, 27 pages. pages. Okay. And 27 they, pages. And how many they photos? They were fairly... Uh, the photos... Let me go back. Looking at the way that they're numbered... Um, yeah, it looks, looks like, like... about maybe 
a little less than 500 at at least mm-hmm. that they took, not not the ones that you got. But yes, because I mean it's clearly I'm missing quite a few photos, and that's okay. What I do have does actually go along with the police reports, unlike the Crowley case where you're reading it and a lot of things don't make sense because the photos don't line up a lot with the police reports. This, when it talks about where the uh, couple uh, were found laying and the injuries to their bodies, it all lines up with the police report. The photos back up the police reports to that too. And so that was a very interesting thing to read. Um, one thing that we need to understand about this case was that it, it really was investigated by the almost the same exact team. I think maybe two new members, uh, um, Officer Holes, and I think that there was one other officer that was new. But the main people that investigated, like the detectives, they were the mm-hmm. same exact detectives involved in this case, too. Bone and Gummert and mm-hmm. Booth. And Booth, yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was interesting that Adam Keeler was the first re- responder for both of these cases, too. So um, Yes. Now, we you, you did receive three audio clips, too. And we are going to play those here at some point. I couldn't tell from the audio clips which police officer was interviewing the, the people. Could could you tell that or no? No, no, I couldn't. It, it didn't it was a say. Very nice, it was the same guy, though, right? The same guy for all three clips, I believe. I think it was. Um, very nice guy. And I found it very informative to listen to the audio clips. It, mm-hmm. it really gave a lot of insight to the state of mind of these victims. And they just seemed like everyday normal couples. And it was just very sad to think that their lives had ended. And we don't even have answers in this case either. No, we don't. Of why. I mean, there's no note, which is something that's important. Um, we found that there was no note in this case. There was no note in the um, Crowley case. Uh, this couple had a had two cats, um, Astro and Pickles, <laughs> and their two pets were they were left alive, just like Paleo was left alive. And I thought that was another interesting parallel. And as you look through the house and read the cases, you'll see many other interesting parallels. But those were the two main ones, is the no notes, the no, um, with the pets being left alive, that was. um, You'll also notice that the lights were interrupted for some reason. This was not planned. one person had been laying on the couch. They had a blanket, a pillow. They were watching the TV, and they were eating a snack, um, some type of a granola bar or a Nutri-Grain bar. And another person, they, they both seemed to be in PJs. So uh, the husband had been home all day. He had called in or he texted his co-worker saying that he'd like to take a day off since he was supposed to have had that Monday off and he had been called into work. So he took that day off and the wife came home at 3 p.m. She had worked at a laundry cleaner uh, facility and she had already changed the PJs at the time of their death. Uh, One person was charging their phone. Another person left their phone on the counter. Then something very tragic happened. Um, Just looking at some of these photos here, going through some of the photos, you can see on the table there is a a pill bottle. There's some pills. Yes. Do we know any um, indication what that is? 
it's very possible that it could have been for migraines. She had a migraine that day and had told a coworker or two coworkers even that she was not feeling well. She was going to cancel a dentist appointment and go home and lay down. So it's very possible it could have been that. But these aren't You'll over the counter. This isn't over the counter. This is, you know, going to a doctor or something like that, I would think. Mm-hmm. To a pharmacy, something well, like that. She also had a history of a head injury at one point. Mm. And so her memory was kind of bad and she did suffer migraines. And so it's very possible she could have had a doctor prescription okay. for okay. migraines that came on. Uh, she, you'll see, you'll notice in the kitchen by the stove that there's some other over-counter med- medicines and then medicines. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got that one. It's up in there. that area. But those are vitamins, right? These are vitamins here. Mainly memory support and mm-hmm. uh, a few others. Interesting. Okay. And the house is really clean too. Um, the purse is kind of in a weird spot, I thought. Yeah. Uh, I know that if I come home and cook, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I leave it against the fridge hmm. up on the counter. But mm-hmm. I I don't – I keep my purse in my room. Some people or women might not, but I like my purse to be near me. But um, usually if I'm in a hurry and I don't have time to go, and put it up. I'll put it next to the fridge and then get started. And the other things that I noticed here in uh, the photos that you sent of the wall um, going up to the stairs, there is a cross there, so I'm assuming they were Christians. I'm getting to that photo. It's um, one that show, it looks like it's looks like a bullet might have hit that spot too. Yes, um, it's a ricochet, and in fact, ricochet. there was a bullet that was in. Um, it was either embedded in that one area or it was a ricochet. So, Greg, those officers can look up. <laughs> we have proof. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just wanted to let you know that one. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Well, maybe they learned from the last case. Maybe that's what happened. They said, okay, well, that's never going to happen again. We're going to make sure we look up. I thought a very interesting fact in this case was there's a lot of office wall clocks throughout this entire house. Hmm. I counted at least 10 clocks. Uh, we're and looking at everywhere the... you looked, mm-hmm. there was a clock. In fact, there was even one on the ground that um, I guess it was hanging near where that clock was. Or, I mean, mm-hmm. um, I'm sorry, where the bullet ricochet was going up the stairs. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been there and fell onto the kitchen floor. Yeah, we're looking at that right now. Also looking at um, the image of the cell phone um, on the in the kitchen area, and that is open to a, to a clock. And I think one of the clips that, that we'll show actually cover that and talk about how um, Lynn always had clocks even on her cell phone she would always have her phone open like this for people that are looking at this right now and um time yeah it's it's interesting that's very interesting i know that that's a lot of clocks but to have all of those clocks and to have the digital clock too Mm -hmm. i don't know i wonder what that's about we're looking at the image um some exercise bike that has game of thrones scandal the catch american horror Mm -hmm. story her TV shows, so she had to write them down, maybe. So, yeah, memory. And then you said a lot of the uh, the stuff um, on top of that toaster oven in the kitchen is for memory. There's even notes on the uh, counter of the kitchen. It says uh, Sunday, 9.30. And if you read that note, it's talking about helping an elderly friend at church because she was afraid of slipping and falling. And so they were going to go in and help her. Oh, how nice. And it says 9.30. And then up there is some type of a show. Yeah, let's look at that. Uh, 
so these are plans that they're making for the future all right here there was they loved antiquing and going to different eclectic craft shows and stuff like that it was one of their friends had made sure to mention it in the police statement that they tried to do this every weekend yeah, they had tickets. And the tickets are for November 19th, 2016. The bodies were found on November 3rd, if I remember correctly here. Mm-hmm. And this is for, it looks like a cover band for the Carpenters, basically is what it looks like. Row 5, seat 16, very low. And then on top of that, um, the dinner theater purchase for Saturday, November 19th. I wonder, okay, same day at 8 p.m. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Plans for the for the future. Um, okay, let's keep moving on here because uh, obviously the first thing that we're looking for, the first thing everybody's looking for, the the thing that is not mentioned in any of the Fox Nine News reports or in any of the K K A R E eleven reports or anywhere is why Alan is guilty of killing his wife. This is a serious thing. So. Within a couple days, two two days, we need to understand why the police believe that Alan killed his wife. And what we're not seeing anywhere, so far I haven't seen it, is where the media is pressing the cops to, to answer that question. They just report whatever the cops say, but they don't they don't ask them that question. Why do you think that Alan is guilty? And in the recordings that we received, there's no answers either. None of the friends and family had any reason to believe that Alan would snap or that he would even commit a murder and then kill himself. They all said that there was no issues with domestic violence. He didn't abuse her. He didn't even verbally abuse her. They seemed to be in love. And they loved being together and doing things together. So something obviously happened that night, if we are going to take the official narrative. In their, in their, uh, in their documents, is there anywhere that says why they think that this guy is no. guilty of killing his wife? What do the media press release re- reports say that just... We we think he killed him, and we think he killed his wife, and that's it, basically. That it was a murder suicide, and I'm gonna look it up right now because. Okay. Because I mean, it's it's one thing for them to say it, but for the media, mm-hmm. I mean, come on, this you guys gotta you gotta ask these questions. Why are you not asking these questions? Um, they mentioned 38 caliber handgun. Adjacent to the bodies, autopsies indicate that he fired the gun, described as a happy couple, close relationship, that he struggled with depression. His father had just died. I mean, depression is going to be there. There were no police contacts at this residence other than a couple routine calls making this level of violence surprising and that's the other thing the um neighbor reported nothing in regards to domestic violence she never heard a single thing and the updated um press release was november 5th Mm -hmm. two days after the bodies were found at the um the pinnock residence so even then, there's really no answers. They're left with their hands up, too. But I do find it very interesting that the that the news didn't even press it. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Okay. And on that same day, no, November 5th, um, Fox News 9 uh, have a updated version and for what they say, 
that they found Alan Lee Josephson, 49, and his wife, Lynn, 56, at approximately 9.45 a.m. November 3rd, 2016, while conducting a welfare check of their home on the 14,000 block of Pinnock Avenue. The weapon used was a 38 caliber handgun, which was found adjacent to the bodies. And I'm going to show an image um, of that. Um, okay. And that I'll is stop. a 38 special. When you see a photo of the gun and it has the, it's open, so you see the cartridges still in the chamber, those are empty mm. cartridges. I think there was one loaded left, I think, and the rest were empty. So okay. it was not a I'll loaded make, gun except for that one I'll, bullet. When you're looking at the image, of all you see is, is the two feet, a couple of blood drops, and... Mm -hmm. the gun um the you're saying that that cage that carrier out there um it was a pet stroller i've never heard of that yes before, but that makes sense okay it's a thing it's interesting is it really a thing <laughs> it okay. is a thing and they all loved right. their cats they were good pet That's owners awesome. they had things all throughout the house for their cats and even neighbors talked about the cats and even the co-workers so that was something that they obviously loved was their children their fur children their fur children that's funny yeah so it's odd then that um tv was was on we can see that the tv's on i wish i could tell what type of magazine was in the or pamphlet was in her purse i can't really tell what that if it's one of those Jehovah Witness things or something. I can't. It looks maybe it's like a like an advert, like a catalog or something like that. It's kind of what it looks like. I had a hard time looking at it, and I was hoping you might be able to with your computer. Yeah, it's a saw. Yeah, it looks like a kind of like a Pottery Barn catalog or something. It's just off the top of my head. But then the first thought was, oh, man, it looks like a Jehovah Witness thing or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and right there where her purse is, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. I sent you a decent photo, but that magnet says love on it. And You're right. If, and if you think back to the Kindle that was in the Crowley case that has love written on it, and I thought yeah, that not was only that odd coincidence. Yeah, you're right about oh, that ahead. Kindle. Um, the Kindle in the Crowley house did have love written on it, but if you look closely at the um, at the laptop, in, or not the laptop, the Apple computer in David's office, written in dust is love as well. Love is written on one of the cell phones too, and I think on Kamel, one of her tattoos is actually love. Yeah, love was a big part of that. And, and then we have a note here on by, the door. <laughs> yeah, and when they're described by uh, friends and family, they were talking about how much uh, David and Kamal loved each other. And even one of the friends, I would say it was a friend, said that their love was very high schoolish. I, I still don't understand that one, but. Yeah, I don't get that either. Maybe just new, okay. like a new <laughs> love or something. I, I guess. Okay, number seven is signs of a struggle. There's a clock in the uh, kitchen with the, that face down, and a battery actually fell out of it. There's knocked over spices off the kitchen counter. So there's spices on the counter that are, like, messed up. I guess they had been on a plate. Then the, um, there was one that was on the ground. I'm thinking possibly a cat had been up there at the time that this occurred and it startled the cat. It's just an estimate, though, or just a guess. And one of the other signs of the struggle was that there were heavy thuds um, heard several times, and that was heard by the next-door neighbors. They lived in a townhome. So when she actually heard this going on, she got up, 
to check outside her window thinking that somebody was outside. When she didn't see anybody, then she went back and sat back down. So in the recording, the officer asked her, has she ever heard gunshots before? And she mentioned, yes, a couple times. And then they just kind of dropped the topic at that time. So she didn't necessarily mention gunshots. She just said heavy feds. I found that kind of interesting, too, because gunshots are pretty distinguishable. It's almost like a car backfire. When you hear them, they're very loud. So that, compared to a thud, is just odd as a description. Now, we don't have photos for this. This is just a description of how the bodies were found. Um, this is number eight. There are large pools of blood under both the victim's heads. Um, mm. Under Allen's or around Allen's head was just a little bit of vomit. Uh, one of the officers had mentioned the vomit and that he possibly could have eaten before he passed away. Now, he was shot on the right side of the head. The exit was on the left side of the head. The gun were found, was found at the feet, but the bodies had been, or his body had been moved. Her body had not been touched. He was lying in front of the door, the main entrance of the house. And he was kind of kitty corner between the door and there was a guest bathroom uh, right there. And so he was partially in the guest bathroom and his feet were in front of the door and they couldn't get it open. So they had to uh, force the door to open by ramming it numerous so times. He's the, so he's the one wearing white socks? No, he's the one that was wearing black socks. She was in the white with the plaid. I book okay. And she was behind the door. He was in front okay. of it, so they pushed him forward, and she was oh, behind against gotcha. the wall. Mm -hmm. And her injuries, she had been shot twice, and the first bullet she tried to deflect with her hand, so she's mis she will be missing her uh, middle finger. And the bullet traveled up her arm and was embedded in her shoulder. And I found that rather interesting because Camilla is missing both her hands. So what if Camille had lifted her hands up to deflect a bullet to cover her face? Like Lynn had in this, uh, in this case, that could be a reason possibly. Sure. But Lynn only was only missing one finger, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Of course, a different type of gun, too, we're talking about as well. Yes, um, completely, yeah. But it looks like she was killed, Lynn was killed at close range, no doubt, right? Yes, she was. Um, she was shot on the right side of her head also, exit side on the left, and there was gun stippling found on the wife, like on her shirt, her face, and there was no mention of stippling for a canal. I think there was a possible mention of it for Rainey, but I'm not 100%. I would have to go back to the records for that one. It's kind of a weird area for them both to be right by the door, I thought. I'm thinking she might have tried to escape. Yeah. And she made a run for the door and Either he overpowered her, overpowered him, or whatever happened happened right there at that place, and then he yeah. just turned around and took his own life at that time. Or there was another person there for sure. Hard to say. Mm -hmm. um, interesting that knowing that the two bodies are right here, that they would move one instead of 
going around to another door or something. I believe there was a sliding glass door, but that one was locked. Right now we're looking at the front door from the couch. We're kind of standing on the opposite side of the couch looking at the front door. And um, there is blood on the lower side uh, next to the door, next to the back of the door where the door should have, where the door was kicked in. Um, and seeing a, a, this image shows a lot of blood back there. Mm -hmm. That would lead me to think this person was shot, the wife, Lynn, was shot while she was on the ground almost. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. It's a lot of blood, unless those are fingers or something else reaching up or something. Wow. That is a horrifying image. Horrifying. One thing that I can say about this case is I received a lot more photos of the gun yeah, than we ever really, had. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that gun isn't bloody either, right? So comparing the two guns is interesting too. Yes, absolutely. There's like three little droplets next to that gun for some reason. We're just going to go through these photos here. Now, when we talk about the blood and the collection and stuff, Detective Bone, Detective Booth, and Detective Gummer were the only ones who did the collection of the blood at the scene. The BCA was never called in to do anything in regards to this case. In fact, there's not even any BCA reports. DNA was not ran. This blood collection was strictly for the ME. It stated that within the police reports. And I found that very interesting also. So if they had considered this a murder, I believe that the BCA would have been called in to conduct their investigation. Can you see the bullet fragment down on the carpet? It's a small fragment. The spices on top of the kitchen counter next to the sink. Some are kind of moved over. Yeah, I seen interrupted. It's an interesting way to describe it. That's what I felt, that they were just at home enjoying an evening, and all of a sudden chaos breaks out and in tragedy. A very interrupted life. In regards to those, um, um, the police report was very, very clear about who did what at the crime scene. Uh, Keeler and Holes responded. This is a very interesting fact here. They had the phones pinged before they forced entry. When they found out that the phones were at the house, that's when they decided to have forced entry. That and the fact that they saw a bullet laying on the carpet through the window. That photo with the cat stand through the window, there's a bullet mm -hmm. there on the carpet. And so that was their just cause, those two things together. Now they, as far as we know, because it's not in the police reports at all, they didn't ping the phones for David and Kamal. And I found that very interesting that they would do it in this case. Not no. um, And then, of course, Detective Bone and Gummer and Booth uh, did the blood samples for the ME. They gathered the bullets and the bullet fragments. Detective Booth also was the one who secured the gun, and he took the photos of the crime scene, and he, he had helped with the blood samples. I read that a couple times. Um, five rounds shot. Four rounds in the house were found. I think the other round was in her shoulder, the fifth round. One was, one round was found um, the wall by the glass door. Uh, another was on the carpet by the TV. Um, one was lodged in the sheetrock close to the ceiling, next to the uh, stairs, and this is what I said, I guess they can look up. 
because they looked up and saw that. And then uh, one was uh, in the exercise machine. They went back to the crime scene um, after they got a call from the the cleaners stating that as, when they moved the exercise machine, the bullet came out of that. So they went back a couple days after the bodies were found. So they didn't leave the house with they no, left the house they didn't with only leave three bullets? Mm-hmm. Yes. But yet they come they come to find out five were actually fired here. I mean looking at the bullet or whatever that Nick is um by the stairs, that's a weird angle too. That's a weird angle if that's a if that's a bullet. It just seems kind of. Well, weird. that's where it was lodged. There was a bullet lodged. lodged in there. They dug it out. Mm-hmm. So that Nick um, was, I guess, it was taken after. Or oh, okay. Still in the, I'm not quite sure. It's hard to, yeah, it's hard to tell from that photo. But. Mhm. And then you'll see one in the window. That was a ricochet. There's a glass yeah. hutch where it went through the wicker chair and it hit the glass hutch that was behind it. The bedroom is made, the master bed is made. I'm going to go back a few here because we're just, I'm just cycling through these photos um, for, for the first time. Actually, it's the first time that I've, I really looked at them. Um, I saw a few of them that you sent over that we've already played, but now we're going through going through all of them. Um, I wonder how many bedrooms there are upstairs, if this is the master bedroom or not, just the one. But um, the bed is neatly made, so I can understand. I don't know. I don't know how they can say that this, because they think that this happened around uh, 9.30 at night or so, and the bodies are found the, the next day. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I guess that's based on those thumps that a neighbor heard. Yes. Lots and she's been bears. watching TV <laughs> also. Yeah, I had a hard time understanding if they had two bedrooms. Or three, because there's there's one that's like a computer room, and it there's lots of storage stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And then there's another bedroom that looks very, very tidy. And then one mm-hmm. that has a lot of stuffed animals and teddy bears. And their image, so it, has, their, it has our photos and their marriage photos, and it has a cross in there, too, another cross, a second cross. Mm-hmm. The clock thing was definitely an OCD. She, they want, she wanted to remember, wanted to keep an eye on what time it was. Oops, I wonder why. Lots of DVDs and movies, CDs, stuff like that. Doesn't that remind you of the Crowley case, too, in the basement? Mm-hmm. The storage room. Just, yeah, yeah the bins and... All the this is all his clutter in there. <laughs> yeah, this That's looks what like I was what, thinking. What, like my wife would tell me, okay, put all your stuff in one in one room. That's your area. That's what I was thinking because there's a TV in there. I think there's a computer also. His clothes are in there too. His, a lot of his clothes are in there. Just a very interesting area. And then yeah, if there was a bed also. in there. Mm-hmm. So he had his garage, and then he had that room. Just odd. But anyway, a lot of movies. The one thing that I nope. noticed was it was like two uh, very distinct personalities: one very neat, and the other kind of cluttered. And it was hard to tell who was who. And then this investigation was wrapped up at 
Okay, it started at 9.47. That's when they got on scene. It wrapped up at um, 3 p.m. The ME removed the bodies at 2.48. And the ME was there within hours, which I thought was pretty normal. Not like the Crowleys where it took them almost 12 hours to arrive. I found that one extremely interesting. And that was the end of my talking points. Is there anything in the photos from that catches your eye? Yeah, I'm just uh, scrolling through all of them now. Um, just trying to understand where all five shots went. I think the photos really give you a very good good idea of that. Oh, okay, the cracked glass, that glass container has a bullet hole in it. Mhm. Mm and then there's a there's like a pant, there's pants or there's something denim behind it as well. These are low level. Why are they, why are these shots so low? Everything is low. Even the one shot by the stairs look, looks like it was shot from a low point shooting up or something. Like somebody was laying down almost as yeah. they were doing the, the shots or on their, like sitting down or laying down because they're so low. They're really low. Everything is low. Okay, that's odd. Uh, it's shot through. Oh, I see. Okay, it's shot through the wicker chair where, mm -hmm. the, where the puppy is. I see what you're saying. Okay. And it hit yeah. that glass hut. Gotcha. And then if people are looking at this image in the in the upper left is where it looks like the bullet fragment or part of the bullet lands over there. It's really interesting. Going back to the case, you'll see where the wooden blinds, there's a yes. I was just them. looking at that. What is that? That's also That's a, a ricochet. Wow. So it goes through the glass? So it oh, ricocheted okay. off of that, and then it fell onto the carpet. It ricocheted from – you remember that part where they were taking a photo of the the edge of the window mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the wall was still there? And yeah. it took a nick out. That whole area is where it ricocheted, and then the, the bullet fell back onto the carpet. Did they say anything the about any, any any open doors or anything, or were they very clear to say that everything was locked? That's it. Yeah, they were very clear to say that everything okay. was locked, the windows, everything. Well, we're looking at the uh, the gun right now, and okay, no blood that I can see on this gun. It's very clean. And they got a few of the bullet fragments. I'm assuming that's what this is here. Wow, look at that one. It's just just like a circle with a hole inside. Uh, that's one. Oh, almost. Okay. There is some on the bottom. I say, that's never seen that. Now we're looking at the Samsung cell phone that's open. Some fingerprints on there. Unlike the other one. So this must be Alan's phone. I'm assuming the Samsung one here. The one with the clock, I'm assuming, is Lynn's phone. It's Lynn's. And see, why would Alan have his phone on the charger if he was going to kill himself? Good question. Uh, looking at the ammo, the ammo, the ammunition right now. Uh, I wonder if that's it, if that's the only box of ammo. One, two, three, four, five are taken out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they should have left with, they should have been looking for five, I guess. Uh, these are hollow points? I can't tell by that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's going to be hollow. 
I'm having a hard time. How does it say that? No, uh, no. Hornsby? Hornsby ammunition. This looks like just the casings. 25 cartridges. There's some type of, uh, some type of plastic wrap over the front front door, the, the outside front door. No, I don't live in Minnesota, so I don't have an answer for that. I don't know. If, I remember when we lived in Alaska, we would kind of do like some insulation on our basement windows and put plastic around it. Mm-hmm. To keep the cold air from coming through, we lived in base housing, so it we had to deal with that, which were much older homes, and so maybe that's what they were trying to do was keep the garage from being so cold. It's just a guess, mm-hmm. but if anybody's listening and they live in Minnesota, they might have an answer to why somebody would put garbage bags over their windows in the garage. I welcome any any types of answer. Was there anything in these reports that kind of stood out to you? Uh, I think mainly the, the biggest one was the fact that BCA did not show up. Uh, one of the things that really interests me was that the reports followed the photos. So I wasn't left questioning a lot of the information that I had just read, and I wasn't left questioning the photos that I just looked at. It it all coincided together. Um, It explained who did what, so we weren't left thinking, okay, who removed the gun? Who secured that? Or who collected bullets? This actually told me who did what, and that was a nice surprise. It it really read like a police report. What I would expect as one. Not like the Crowley case where there's so many questions even after you read it. And trying to figure out like body position and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm making sense here. Yeah. Well, it's hard to make sense with any of this of this stuff here. It is. But. I mean, and this is a very sad case. And then you you think, okay, well, financial issues might have been a problem, or depression might have been a problem, but none of the family members ever saw anything that was going any clues. They didn't have any concerns. They just accepted it. Oh, there is one thing. The mother knew. She asked the she asked the officer. I believe it was Officer Gummer. Is my son dead? And he said yes. Why do you ask? Well, he asked why do you ask that? And it was a feeling that she had. She couldn't get a hold of him. And I, I thought that was an interesting correlation also. Here's something interesting. Um, on page 26 of 27, that image is very clear, by the way. So that's a good one. Um, I don't know if you purposely <laughs> wanted to point this one out. This says that on 11-10-2016, we were called to the address 14025 Pinnock Avenue by John Eric Josephson. He said he found a bloody towel in the upstairs linen closet. Detective Becker and I went to the house and collected the the towel. This is Detective Sean McKnight reporting this. It had some dark stain and two holes in the towel. John had already touched it multiple times. We placed it in a bag to bring back to the police department. Once in Apple Valley Police Department, I use some type of thing to test these stains. I don't know what that word is, but you can clearly see it right here. They did not come up positive for blood. And looking closely at the towel, it is apparent that the stains on the towel are from hair dye. It appears Lynn used this towel when she dyed her hair. The colors and stain patterns would be consistent with with the hair dye process. 
She had also been noted that after the cleanup crew left, John found a portion of a bullet on the carpet. The cleanup crew had cut out the carpet and had further taken the exercise bike apart. It is likely that the bullet fragment fell out of the bike when it was moved and further disassembled. John kept the bullet fragment and took it home with him. What? what? Yeah, I'm like, why not call the police? <sighs> okay, who is John? <laughs> that, obviously, that's that's the brother, right? I'm assuming it's... That's what I'm thinking. Allie's I'm assuming brother. that that's the brother. Why would you take a bullet fragment home? Why are there two holes in this towel? I guess I guess that could be whatever. Um, it's just a very used towel, very old, and I can see that. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. she used it to dye her hair, then she wanted to use just a really old towel to do that. So she's not really a good one. Camille had just dyed her hair too. Another interesting correlation. So let me just and see I look if forward any... to the audience listening to the audio because it really does help explain this case and it what is said in these audios does correspond with the police reports so I don't really think that anybody was hiding anything they were trying to be as helpful and as honest as possible that was my feeling listening to these to their statements and we don't have audio for the um, the Crowley case at all. Although there is audio on file, we just don't have access to it. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. They have four cars. Right. Yes, they did. Four cars. Um, That's interesting, too. We have work car, pleasure car. A, nice uh, a Grand Am, yeah. mm -hmm. a Grand Am, a Pontiac, a Mercedes, and a blue Mustang. They had huh. one parking overflow, one parked in the driveway, one parked in the garage, and then one over at his mother's house. If they were Christians, and we see two. Crosses. I didn't see a Bible in any of the photos, but if they were, it would lead me to think, you know what, you're going to need some hard evidence and you're going to need some hard facts before you just start saying that um, this guy killed his wife, uh, first of all, and then for whatever reason, killed, killed himself. So uh, no indication on this guy's prints on the um on the murder weapon anything like that because they didn't bother to do those tests it's kind of what it sounds like if the if the minnesota bca is not involved um can we conclude that no dna test nothing like that was ever done or is it just just not public record maybe they did it kind of privately i based on the autopsies maybe not... it wasn't necessary no, I assume that it wasn't done only because I asked for them and I was told that they were not, that they weren't done. Mm. Um, I sent a screenshot of that email to you. Okay. It should be in I'll your messages. I'll make sure to add that here. Messages. But yes, I, I asked for DNA, BCA results, um, I believe some other records too, and it said in review in reviewing the case file, it was determined that there were no DNA test results or BCA lab results from this scene. The autopsy reports are not releasable. Wow. Well, there you go. Any uh, final final words here before we sign off? Uh, that I just I want to give my condolences to the the family and their friends, and uh, the only reason why I had requested this file was to see if the Crowley case was real or not. I was going to compare the two cases and the investigations, come to find out that uh, I'm left with even more questions than answers. But I'm hoping that Alan and 
Lynn are resting in peace and that their two kitties are with loving homes. And I want to thank the audience for listening to us tonight. That's right. So let us know what you think. Um, how, when you compare this case to the Crowley case, uh, what what was done right, what was done wrong, what is missing, what is here that isn't in the Crowley case. If anybody notices anything, please leave us some notes in the in the comments of this video. And um, based on that, we will. Uh, decide if it's worth coming back and doing a second one. Uh, we covered a lot of ground here, and this was the first time that I've looked at uh, a lot of these photos. And um, the most interesting one to me is the gun, where the gun was. All right, until we, we meet again, we will sign off for now. All right, where do you guys work at? Um, Ascendant, E-S-S-E-N-D-A-N-T, in Egan. Okay. What do you guys do? We're a wholesale company for stationery. Oh, okay. All right. What's that I'll do for you? He goes by Al? Is that yeah, it's with uh, he's our maintenance lead. Okay. So All right. He and one other guy were our maintenance department. So they pretty much took care of the facility. We got conveyors and heating and boiler and everything else. Okay. So that's pretty much so he's your handy guy who fixed everything and yep. maintained everything. What brings you guys out here today? We had a call from Appalachia Police that there he was uh, at this point missing and okay. doing a welfare check. Okay. So that's the reason it indicated to me that I must have gone see people again. Okay. All right. Um, I can't say if he's okay or not. Okay. Fair enough. I, Fair have, enough. I haven't been inside to know what's going on. Um, okay. I know that they're, to be candid with you, I'm not trying to spread rumors, but there's, you know, deceased in there. So we're trying to figure out that's why we call you know I appreciate is, is, yeah. he, is he working today or we he was scheduled you know? to work and when he didn't show up I texted him first because we thought we got another facility up at DP that he was working at okay. I didn't know if he was going to be up there or not so I texted him didn't get any response so then I called him and as soon as I called him all I got was his voicemail so he hasn't contacted us back since okay did it go right to uh he went right to voicemail I never ran okay. Sorry. I love it. Hey, can, <laughs> at this moment, can, it's not can, a bad game. Can, can that not bring a smile to everybody's face whenever it is? I mean, that's perfect. Wife has daycare, so it's appropriate. And there it was you a go. good timing for that. Hey, Al's, he's with us for 24 years. 24 years, okay. He's there for, for quite a while. Any problems as an employee? No. Um, you know, at times he'll show some hyperness, but otherwise, he's been a very good employee. Okay. Yeah. I've never seen him raise his voice. But. Okay. No anger issues or anything? Is that no, he gets, I mean, he gets frustrated sometimes with work issues. He gets a little passionate, but he never raises his voice. He just pushes his point, and, and uh, if you discuss it with him, then he understands. And, uh, he left to, go with it. He left Tuesday, shook my hand in good spirits, and he ran to the yeah. door, double-checked something for me. And then I had a text message from him yesterday morning, asked if he could have PTO day. For yeah. today or for yesterday? For yesterday. yesterday. Okay. So Bob, I'd like to take a PTO day today couldn't use on Monday and have some family emergencies going on, gearbox and shelf. He worked um, uh, Wednesday night too. He came back in Wednesday, Tuesday, night. Tuesday night to replace the gearbox from the oh, uh, must have been a couple, three Mind hours. Mind if I just snap a picture of that? Oh, absolutely not. Is that, right? is that his personal phone that you know? Like, it's that's his phone. Okay, you don't have like a work phone or anything that you guys no, provide no, or anything yeah, like no. that? Um, so that was the last communication that you had with that him? Was it. Was, was that was And then this morning I reached out to him too, asked if he was okay. I knew he had stuff going on, so I asked okay. him. And what, nothing. I didn't read it, but what, right. what, 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 what was he saying? Was that he needed PTO? Did he say he like a not. reason? Just he, said, he just said what you see, that was it. Personal years. time off? That's what PTO is, right? Yep, personal okay. time off. I'm sorry. Nope, yeah. nope, just making sure we're talking the same language. <laughs> <laughs> we all work for different businesses. I got all kinds <laughs> of acronyms in my world, so I, I got to make sure I understand everything. Um, Okay, so so after 7:18 yesterday morning, he left work, and everything was good after that. 17, he texted me Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. I believe it was he punched out at 9:40, 7:44 I think is when he punched out. Yesterday or no, last? Tuesday. Tuesday. He took Tuesday? yesterday off. Of that okay. Pre PTO day. Okay, so Tuesday, Tuesday at 7:44 he punched out. PM. PM. PM yep. Okay. And that's the last time that anyone was seen him. him. So then this morning, his counterpart, I asked him if he um, talked to Al. He said no. He said I called him last night. I said, did it go Did it go right to voicemail? He says, no, it did ring Okay. last night. So then this morning, it went right to voicemail. Yeah, straight. There wasn't one ring. 
And who called him? Who was the coworker who called last? That was his um, partner, his uh, maintenance okay. co-worker. Yeah. Did he say when he called him at all? He did not, nor did I ask. Okay. But it rang and then it ended up going to voicemail. Yep. He didn't actually talk to him last no, night or anything? No. Okay. Any health issues, anything like that? No, he never, you guys are aware of? He never very missed yeah. okay. His wife, okay. both of them are very health fanatics, to be honest with you. I think the biggest thing he Like workout health fanatics, like eating health I'd fanatics, more, or just fit health? I'm going to say fit healthy. Okay. Probably eat and what they do with that. Okay. Workout wise, I don't have your answer, but okay. I know that they're very. They watch what they eat, everything they do. Okay. I know earlier earlier this past summer, his dad passed away, so we had to take a week or so off to deal with that. Okay. So I'd say that was probably the biggest thing he had to stress out on earlier this year was that. What kind of car did they have there? He has four of them. He has four. <laughs> one there, and one there, and there must be a couple in the garage. I believe there's a Mustang in the garage, and then there's a. Uh, so one here being the silver, one, the silver one must one or the silver Pontiac, Pontiac there. Yeah. The one that's in the driveway. The black car. Yep. Yeah, then in the garage there should be a a, a blue Mustang. Okay. And then there's also a black uh, Beamer. Okay. So okay. I know we have four cars. Okay. I better write all these down. So we've got the. Is that a Grand Am or free? Yep, Grand Am. Okay. Okay. We've got the Grand Am. We've got. I think that's a six Pontiac. Six. What do you call those? Other ones? The black one there? G6, I think it's a G6. It's convertible, ain't it? Not that one. That one? No, it's just a cruiser. And then he's got a blue Mustang. A blue Mustang, Mustang older one. I know that's a 90s. And his Beamer's a convertible. And a be Beamer's and a convertible. And then a BMW. Yeah. Okay. And the, the Pontiac up there is not hard to tell. I can't tell from here even yeah. if that's a... So, which one did he drive mostly? To work. I see him more drive mostly the black one to work. Yeah. Okay. Although he drove the silver one the last time I saw him on Tuesday, didn't he? This one? Yeah. The Grand Am? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's all I need at this point. I appreciate you guys chatting with me. And I appreciate you taking the time. I really do. It's a horrible one. Yeah. It's a, are you guys doing okay? Is there anything that we can do for you? We're just worried about him. Like yeah. We can get home. It's not like Elvin yeah. to let us know when he's not going to. I just want the whole career with him. So uh, yeah. it hurts. No. Yeah. You know, I, I can't tell you because I don't know. Fair um, enough. Medical examiners are the ones who make, you know, positive identification. I can't do that. So, um, I you know, I think we can all come to conclusions and, yep. you know, make reasonable guesses and assumptions about things, but I certainly can't tell you for certain. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to be like, yep, this is the way it is, and then all of a sudden it's wrong because I don't know, I don't have that information. No, so. and I appreciate this way. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. How long does she work for you? Um, I didn't get a chance to go back in the office, but I'm going to say between six and seven years. Oh, for a while? Yes. Okay. Um, is it just kind of the two of you in there most of the time, or she is there lots of different people in there? Uh, she works um, seven till three by herself, but okay. there would I would always show up at eight o'clock in the morning, between eight and eight thirty, and then I have another driver that shows up at about. One thirty, two o'clock to deliver. Okay, so it's a pretty small operation. Yep, in terms at of that point. Not a ton of employees. Nope, like nope. And they're all working together. Everybody, yeah. and then she, her replacement comes in at three o'clock to take over for okay. her. Okay. Does she work like the register, taking yep. in laundry, taking yep. payments, getting shirts and whatever yep. back to the customers and that sort of thing? Yep. Okay. Um, good employee. Excellent. Excellent employee. Okay. Ever any problems with Never. her? Never. Zero. Okay. She's, She's a little high strung, a little nervous. Um, it po this position probably worked out really great for her because I think she doesn't interact uh, or a lot of commotion is stressful for her. So a okay. calm environment was good for her. I think. Okay. Taking, my taking some tasks, get rid of the tasks. Yes, yes, yes. She does, yeah, she doesn't handle um, like if an angry customer came in or so, it, mm -hmm. that would just kind of send her in an overload so she okay. didn't handle stress well. I knew that much. Okay. okay. Were you guys, obviously your employer and employee, were you also friendly outside the work? Or not, you outside, but, not outside, but, but friendly. We, I, I knew a little bit about her life. Not okay. a lot, but a little bit. Okay. You guys were chatting. Yes. What did you know about her life? Um, recently, her and her husband um, 
uh, they would go to the Ames Theater. Um, they did a lot of um, cultural events. She loved to go um, to plays. I would bet they would go to plays or cultural events um, every other weekend. They were doing something nice like that. Okay. Recently, she, they were having a little bit of stress because they bought a new bed and then they had to take the new bed back and then they had to get another bed because it wasn't satisfactory. Okay. So I knew there was a problem okay. with not that she was like, if this doesn't work, this is it, he, you know, type thing. I'm getting sick of the bed issue. And that's like the first time I ever heard her ever say anything a little unusual about because it was just okay. her and him. The whole was time. it because of? Because of something with him, or because, because their marriage him. couldn't handle it, or it was, he he had a hard time sleeping, so he okay. was very particular about the bed that they had to buy, and it was kind of driving her nuts about that. Okay. So. Okay. Typical so, stuff. So they had been typical. fighting about the, is it. Fighting is it, a strong word. Okay. It was the first time she kind of mentioned something on because they would take off on the weekends and do craft shows. Um, um, I always thought it was kind of nice. She had a husband that um, would take off and do all these, mm -hmm. you know, like craft shows, flea markets, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of stuff. So okay. it seemed like they had a nice relationship. Okay. How long have they been together, do you know? Mm, she just told me not that long ago. I'm going to say about 15 years, okay. somewhere in there. Okay. So quite a while. Any children that they nope. have? Their cats. That baby carriage was for her. Cats. Okay. Cats How many in. cats do they have? Two. Two? Okay. Um, does she, is this like first marriage, only marriage for them, or I do they have so. other I, ex spouses? Or I don't think so. Them? I think this is the first uh, marriage for both. Okay. Um, so as far as you know, other than the mattress, there weren't any marital issues. She nope. didn't confide in you. Nope. Would she have confided in anyone else at work about anything? Nope. I, the, the gal that, that I called to come in, because I, I showed up at 8 o'clock, and I pulled into the parking lot, and I always look for a car. And she drives a Mercedes, a very beautiful Mercedes. Okay. And, and um, I said, well, it's not there. And then I thought, well, maybe her husband dropped her off car problems. Well, then I pulled up to the front of the door and it was dark. And I'm going, oh my gosh. So I go in and I look on the schedule, you know, because if she would have changed, if she would have changed her schedule, she would always get somebody to work for her and she would always marry. I've got Candace to come in for me. She was very, very responsible. Good about telling yep. you about if, those. She didn't work the weekends, but if we had a new person up at the store working the weekends, she would always say, Mary, I'm 10 minutes away. If they have a problem, I can run up. I mean, she was a wonderful employee. Okay. So just a great person. Okay. Okay. She has a so, brother that lives in in um, uh, St. Paul, and that's and then her mother lives, I want to say, Arizona or someplace like that. Okay. Um, any idea what their names are? Or anything no. like I've got the gal at work going through the Rolodex because okay. we just she gave me her husband's work for next of kin, okay. her work number and his cell phone number, and when I got into work, I called. When I realized she wasn't there, I called her cell phone and just said, you know, I'm kind of wondering what's going on. And then, you know, I start calling people, did Lynn switch with you? No, no. Well, then I called her again, no answer. I called the, the office to get her address, and I, I drove over here about 9-ish, I think, and pounded on the door. And, and in fact, I got the wrong, I got the neighbor, so okay. I wasn't sure which, where to go. Okay, so so you got just so I get my time. She's supposed to start at seven this morning. Mm -hmm. Normally, no problems, no calls or anything like that from her. Nope. No calls from nope. her saying there's issues. No, nope. didn't be nope. scheduled change thing. You got there at eight. No car, still locked up, still dark. Clearly, she wasn't there for the day. Yep. So, did you come here immediately, or, or no? I have a. I went back to the plant because I wanted to get her uh, address, get on the address. Okay. So then I got, dropped off at the plant, got somebody to take Lynn's place, my place, at the branch store. Mm -hmm. Then I got the address and came here in so 8.30, quarter to 9, by the time I got all that. So 8.30, 8.45, you get here. 
and see anything? You no, knock? You, did you talk to a neighbor then? I knocked on the wrong door when I first came mm -hmm. up because it was, I knew it was 14049, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that the side entrance yeah, went around. That's why I went to and so I knocked to on the and, neighbor to Yeah, that. and I just said, is there there here? And she said, you got the wrong, you got the wrong. So I went around and I knocked down and you know, I tried to peek in, but it looked like there was something over the windows. I couldn't see. I couldn't see a cat. So that's when when I called when the police called back. They said that because I was worried it was carbon monoxide. Because when she left work yesterday about three o'clock, she told a replacement she was canceling her dental appointment and she had a headache. Okay. And um, Lynn had an, a kind of a bad accident maybe three years ago, okay. where she. Um, felt like she had a concussion and was doing um, therapy for concussion and memory and, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I knew she was dealing with that kind of mm -hmm. issue. So when she said she had a headache, I thought, oh. And then I know she mentioned something that her um, air conditioner or furnace wasn't working great this summer. And I, then I thought, oh, my gosh, um, uh, carbon monoxide. So that's why I can't. And then I got back to the shop and called you guys. So. Come out and do the welfare. Okay, so you knocked here, no answer, couldn't see in, and then you left. Did you go straight back then? I went back to work. Yes. Back to work, and so about how long was it between you being here and then you calling, calling the, us? Ten minutes. Okay. Ten fifteen minutes. Okay. okay. And you called from work. Mm -hmm. Okay. I even called Fairview Ridges to see if maybe her husband had a heart attack. In the middle of the night, and she was that. If she, he would have had, if he would have been sick, that would have sent her real stressful. So I thought, well, maybe she's at the hospital and has just blanked everything out. Sure, and, lost track of yeah, time yep, or something. Yep. Okay. So the last time that she was, that you know that she was seen was yesterday when she left work about three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who did she? Who did you? Were you there at that time, or was she talking nope. to a different employee? The, the employee that's there now. And so she was, that was the last time you guys heard from her, no other messages or anything but, after that. And prior to Mary... And other than the headache, everything seemed, it, seemed what good. What was weird is the driver that re came back every day, he's there between 1.30 and 2, and I checked with him and I said, how did Lynn seem to you when you dropped off the cleaning? And he said, she seemed fine. She was laughing and joking at, at 2 o'clock and said what a beautiful day it was. So from between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, she got a headache and was canceling a dental appointment. Any idea where she goes to the dentist? Mm-mm. Okay, you talk about that? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, think, do you know uh, mom's name or her name? No, like I so, don't. Okay. She's not okay. very close to her mom. Okay. Um, she, she was very close to her brother. In fact, they did a lot of things. He would join them for... Um, uh, plays and stuff like that, and I cannot think of her. She, she's one of these people that is like clockwork. Okay. She's, she's not a yeller, she's not a screamer, she's a very kind, gentle person. Okay. Um, and her husband, um, I just assumed he was kind and gentle too because Have they... Have you met him? No. Okay. And I, I asked um, the gal that works is there now, have you ever met her husband? And she says, no, I've never met him either. Because um, I checked with the driver and I said, do you know what kind of car he drives? I said, I, he thought it was a Mustang, so I don't know if he yeah. That husband drives a Mustang? Yeah. And she drove, she what drove color Mercedes? She silver, drove. small, two-seater Mercedes. And then she also had like a gray Pontiac, Grand Am, Grand Prix, that she drove in the winter when the weather change. She'd put the Mercedes in the garage and take out the Grand Dam. Okay. The Grand Prix or sure. something. Sure. Sure. And then husband maybe drove a Mustang. Mm -hmm. Any color on that? Or? No. Like he couldn't remember the color. Okay. But he had seen it before? He talked to Lynn because Lynn loved cars too. Okay. So and David, the driver, loved, you know, okay. they would chat a little bit about cars. She had a cell phone? Mm -hmm. What kind of cell phone do you know? Like Samsung. Okay. It was a, I know it wasn't an iPhone, and she just got it. it was the bigger a one. Giant one, like it, the Note. Yeah, like that, well, that wasn't the Note, but it's like, you know, the iPhone 6S or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> one, and, one, one, one. Yeah. And she had a pink um, Intel, no, pink Intel laptop oh, okay. that she would bring to work. But uh, it was a Samsung. She just got it just in the last two months. She said where she has your service here or anything like that? Okay. Do you have, do you know her number or anything, phone I, number? I got like it in my car. We'll, we'll get it okay. in a minute. Um, her husband's name? Al. Al? Is that short for anything that you know of? No, she just, she, she just always called the mail. Okay. And I called his work because, um, um, you know, I, the only thing that she had, a, um, she, she did a little bit of repair work. And yesterday morning she called me up and said, I cut a pair of drapes. And she says, I cut them in the wrong place. And she was starting, she was starting to go into the fret mode. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lynn, don't worry about it. If you cut them and you just let it go, when I get there in the morning, we'll look at it, but don't worry about it. What was she cutting? A pair of draperies. She was going to shorten the pair oh, of drapes. Oh, okay. Because you guys do like a little, tailoring. Yeah, and that a little bit of there. stuff like that. Okay. So she called me up and she says, I cut them in the wrong place. And I said, don't worry about it. And I hung up from her and she called back, talked to my coworker and said, tell Mary I didn't, I cut them in the right place. So, she, she so, figured it out. So when I didn't, so when she didn't show up at work, I'm thinking, did the stress of cutting the drape in the wrong place send her, and she just didn't want to deal with me? Or, or so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she wouldn't be, she's not like that. So okay. then I thought I got to do a welfare check. Okay. Okay. She's not good, huh? Well, from what I can tell you is there's there's somebody dead in there. So I don't know who it is. I haven't even been inside on this. Okay. So I don't know. One person or two? Uh, I can't get into okay. specifics of it, but I think you have a good oh, idea of what's going on. So yeah. I think your your instincts are probably pretty good. Okay. So there really isn't any like next to kin I know. Yeah, well, no, that's at this point we want to make sure. I know. Again, I, I want to make sure I can't say it's her. So I know it's her. We, we have to, you know, the medical she's examiner. Got, yeah, she's got dark brown reddish hair, very petite. Okay. Um. And the only person I know, and her, what was really weird, as was nine o'clock this morning, because I called her coworker that she works with. She says her mother-in-law called Helen, and I said, did she leave a phone number? And she says no, and that that's kind of unusual. And I said, well, if anybody else calls there, if they don't want to leave you their phone number. Give them my cell phone number, or give them the work number, but you know, I'd really like to talk to somebody in their mm -hmm. family. So, the mother-in-law called Helen, is just said, "Is Lynn there? I want to talk to Lynn." So, okay. and that was this morning. Nine o'clock. Okay. What kind of phone did she have before she had her Samsung? Was that also an Android, not a not an, not not an, an iPhone? Yep. That's okay. what I figure. For most people know the differences between you know. They an Android at, or an iPhone. And you know what? It's only, it's it, it's just the look. It's mm -hmm. nothing else. Yep. But um, she was just so thrilled because she, her her cell phone, the she always had it when I'd come in. It was always on the desk, and it was always with the clock face mm -hmm. on for her face page. I said okay. she always had the clock face on okay. it. Did she have a color case or anything on that? It just, I if I remember correctly, it was just black. Okay. There was nothing. N nothing, nothing on it. No, I just know no her. Or no, or? not not that I remember. Okay. Um, um, and she just had a bright pink Intel computer laptop. Okay. Worked with her. I saw her every day. She's just a wonderful person, yeah. and it's just very sad. 